Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, of course, uh, we, we continue the conversation on security and uh, the situation in Kaduna State. We're now joined this morning uh, by the Commissioner for Information, uh, sorry, Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, uh, in Kaduna State. Of course, he's going to be joining the conversation. We're already we're speaking with Mr. Onna Ekwomu. Good morning, Mr. Aruan. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. L let's bring you in to share exactly what the situation is like in uh, Kaduna and, of course, uh, what uh, played out uh, over the weekend. Well, like uh, we all know, uh, on Friday, approximately 39 students of the Federal College of uh, Forestry Mechanization were kidnapped by armed bandits who invaded uh, the school. Uh, fortunately uh, for us, the prompt uh, intervention by security agencies saved the day uh, because without the intervention, uh, they would have uh, kidnapped uh, a higher number than uh, the 39 because about 180 uh, students were uh, rescued. Uh, then yesterday, we also uh, came out with a new development where we uh, announced that an attempt to kidnap students of government science secondary school Ikara in Ikara local government was also foiled by security agencies. At the end of the day, uh, 307 students of uh, the school were all accounted. Uh, there was uh, none of them that was missing. We equally uh, inform you that in the early hours of uh, yesterday, Sunday, uh, a group of armed bandits made an attempt uh, to carry out a kidnapping at the senior uh, staff quarters of uh, federal uh, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria within the vicinity of the Kaduna uh, Airport, and they were uh, also uh, repelled. Okay. Uh, and this is the development uh, here uh, in Kaduna. So, so that attack on the fan that you mentioned, that, that will be the second one in, in, in just two weeks, because we had one attack last week. Yes. Okay. So let's... But, uh, it, was, it was repelled, and uh, many of the bandits uh, escape with uh, gunshot, gunshot wounds, okay. like uh, we said. Okay, Mr. Arwan, I want us to get into the details of the fraud attack on Friday. We've had conflicting information regarding how that was pulled off by the army. The army public relations officer uh, he said that he, you know, the army acted on a tip off. But uh, our, our guest and uh, your friend and colleague, Mr. Onayekomu, security expert, is saying otherwise. So from the information you have on ground, how was the Nigerian army able to successfully repel that attack and rescue the over 300 children to safety? Which of the attack are you talking about? I'm talking about the Ford the attack one in the Kaduna. Federal College? Of a forestry mechanization? No, no, not that one. The kidnap was successful, uh, you know, for that one. The one that was followed uh, at the Turkish school in, uh, what's the name of the local Riga government Chikun. now? Sorry? Riga, the local yes, yes Rigachikun Riga Chikun local government area in Kaduna. No, uh, Rigachikun is in Chukun uh, local government area. Well, uh, we will not uh, engage in any uh, argument. Uh, with Mr. Onu, even though I, I did not uh, hear him because I was unable to get you. But I want to inform you that uh, what you heard from the spokesperson of the Nigerian army mm -hmm. and with uh, what we said, uh, this is the factual account of what uh, happened. Uh, like the army spokesperson said, the, the intelligence we got was the bandit were actually heading to uh, the Turkish uh, school here in Kaduna. Okay. And the school was well fortified. Uh, troops were mobilized uh, to the location. Uh, on their way, the second batch of the troops were heading uh, to the Turkish school. So on their way, we got another intelligence 
that uh, the bandit were uh, at the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization. And immediately they made a U-turn and move uh, there. And like we all know from what we've heard from the students who by uh, troops of the Nigerian army, uh, this is exactly what uh, happened. The prompt response by the army saved the day. If not, we would have been talking about uh, over 200 uh, students. So we don't have time uh, to engage analysts. No, but let, let me quickly clarify. Mr. Hold on, Mr. Uh, people, uh, can you hold on? In an unnecessary uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Arwan, kindly uh, hold on. We have a focus. I need to clarify something, Mr. Arwan. Um, Onai Homo, you know, actually was given kudos to the Kaduna state government for its internal Sorry. security mechanism that was able to um, ensure that there was a quick response that saved the day. The day. He, he was not arguing, okay. you know, with uh, the Kaduna state government. He's not saying that okay. they, they failed in any way. He was actually given kudos to the governor of Kaduna okay. state and to the internal security mechanism that was able to get the quick response of the security agencies to ensure that there was um, um, a rescue of those uh, students and they saved, of course, those people from being kidnapped. So just to clarify, there's no argument. There's no um, then, back and forth. Then, then the gap, then the gap uh, came from you, uh, not uh, from me, because uh, that was uh, what I had uh, from you. But okay. anyway... Well, uh what we what our focus now is uh how do we get the students uh back uh, this is our focus and uh we are working uh, around the clock okay. and uh by the special grace of god at the end of the day uh, we are optimistic that things will work well and i also uh, uh thank you for clarifying to me what okay. Dr. Ono actually uh, said. Mr. Rowan, I wanted to ask you, the Nigerian-Turkish International School in uh, Riga Chikun in Kaduna State, you know, where this attack was fought, is that a government school? No, uh, it is a private uh, okay. school. So does that have anything to do with, you know, why this attack was fought? It was a private school, so they were able to quickly, you know, move on their feet to make sure that, their, you know, their students are safe. So the fact that it's a private school and the other schools where these attacks have been successful are public schools. I mean, does this really have a factor in, in, in you know, in this situation? I uh, think, first, Mr. Arwan, and then Mr. Uh, don't, 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 don't miss up the issue. Uh, in the side of security, what is before you is to save life, is to prevent an incident uh, from uh, happening. We've explained to you, the army had did the same. We said the initial intelligence we got was the bandits were actually heading towards the Turkish school. And immediately, government and the military and other security agencies put machinery on motion, the beef of security around the route that will lead the bandit to that location. So obviously, or it's possible, their informant alerted them that the route uh, is littered with security assets. All right, okay. uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring uh, you now. Now find their way to the other location. And I made it clear here that immediately we receive reports that they are operating in uh, the Federal College of Forestry mechanization there was prompt response as well which saved the day if not we will have been talking about uh 200 or more uh All right. kidnapping uh, of uh, okay. students so, Mr. Ekomo, so this would is you like what to... i want you to understand there is no distinction okay. between private and government school this is security we are all nigerians all we right. have responsibility uh, to protect uh, everyone and uh, this is what we are doing. Okay, so Mr. Ekomo, would you like to react to that if you feel there was, you know, because this is a private school we're talking about and that's why the attack was able to uh, be repaired. I don't know what you think about that. Well, I, I think you are conflating um, the report. Um, there was the incident on Friday at um, the School of Forestry Mechanization and there was the incident um, subsequently, at GSS, where 300 uh, students were saved 
by the military. And that's the one I was telling you that um, the state government mechanism for um, was it for response to these kinds of emergencies worked. It worked well, and that's what I was saying. I don't know, uh, you know, all I said about uh, disagreeing with uh, Mr. Yerima was that he said there was a tip off. And now I use language advisedly. I don't use language loosely. What I said was that there was a, a, a distress call from GSS. Now, I haven't spoken about the Turkish school at all. That's not, uh, that was not entered our conversation this morning. Yeah, that's the one so, I'm asking you about now. I'm, I'm asking you about the Turkish International I, School. We haven't spoken I'm not familiar that. with that incident. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. I'm all right. not familiar at all with that incident. Right. I know about the um, forestry mechanization. Now, you have the government official there, and Mr. Arua is in charge of internal security, and he has all the information. So let him educate us. He, you know, he's familiar with it. I get my briefings from watching him on TV. So, you know, that's why I told you some of the information might not be in the public domain. That's the, that's the, um, um, the re reference I made earlier. All right. I, I want to... I want to, I, I want to bring, uh, because I think we, we must also remember that there are still people in captivity as we speak. Um, and of course, it's still very, very important that the Kaduna State government and the Nigerian government ensures that those people are set free. So I'm going to go back to um, Arwan before Ona Ikomi, you can also respond to this um, after. But um, Sabal Arwan, tell us about what the Kaduna State government is currently doing. Is there a conversation about ransom to be, to be paid? Is there conversations about, you know, being able to swoop in and, and maybe arrest some of these kidnappers, rescue some of these people? What exactly are the steps that are likely to be um, on ground to ensure that these people are brought home safe? Well, I, I think I have answered that. I have told you here that the uh, government of Kaduna State are working with uh, all critical stakeholders to ensure that these students uh, return uh, safe and in good uh, health. Uh, this is the only thing that I can see uh, here. Uh, I cannot be able uh, to talk about uh, operations. I cannot be able to say anything uh, that could jeopardize or undermine uh, all that uh, we are doing uh, collectively uh, in order to ensure that our students are back. But again, I want to assure Nigerians, I want to, especially the parents, that uh, we are with them. We are not only um, doing all that is expected of us, we are going beyond what they can uh, imagine uh, in order to ensure that uh, the students are back. Uh, security, uh, issues are complicated. There are things that when you say them, they will undermine uh, what you are doing. Uh, you are likely to have a setback. All but right. I want to assure you that uh, we're doing our best and I will not be able uh, to reel out to you uh, what uh, we are doing in details. What is important is we are on our feet and uh, we are doing what we think uh, is the best that will bring uh, this uh, student uh, out All right. in good health. Before, before Mr. Ekomu comes in, talk. before Mr. Ekomu comes in, um, Samuel Arouan, I, 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 from what you said initially, it seems like Kaduna State currently, uh, you know, is is dealing with a lot with regards kidnappers and bandits. Um, why do you think you yeah. know the last couple of days has played out yeah. the way it is? We've talked. They're talking about two, three cases of kidnapping attempts, and of course, some of them that was one of them that was, uh, you know, relatively successful. Um, is Kaduna State currently under attack? I, 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 you are. You, you have to look at the bigger picture. Uh, there is no states in northern Nigeria, or there is no state in Nigerian Federation uh, that is not facing one security challenge or the other. If you read the news uh, today, you hear a lot from other part of the state. But I think uh, why you are getting to know what is happening in Kaduna State is because we have democratized security. We have democratized security in the sense that uh, we are giving update. We want people uh, to know what is happening. 
so that we don't keep people in the dark. Uh, for instance, we are the first subnational uh, in Nigeria uh, to come to come uh, up with uh, annual security report where we give uh, details the number of people kidnapped by armed bandits, the number of people killed, and the number of uh, other uh, issues that have happened uh, in the country. It is a sign of transparency. It's a sign of us knowing where the problems are coming from and what do we do in order to solve the problem. So simply because Kaduna state government uh, is transparent in security issues doesn't mean that uh, the state is under siege. I can wow. assure you uh, we're doing our best and people are going about uh, their, their normal uh, businesses is a challenge. We are not denying the fact that we don't have problems. Uh, these problems are in about uh, five to six local government uh, areas in Kaduna Central Senatorial District. And we are not sleeping. And again, if you are right. following events, you will be uh, following uh, the air interdictions that are carried out by the Nigerian Air Force and other feats that are being achieved by troops uh, on the ground. Uh, for instance, you look at Kaduna Abuja Road. When last uh, did we hear uh, something unusual along the road? You also look at the Southern Kaduna general area. Uh, what we have, a uh, situation that are isolated. All right. So if you are going to assess our state based on the, what you are hearing, I think uh, you are not doing justice. But I want to right, show you one. that we are on our feet. We are not sleeping. We are doing all that is required of us. The name of Nasser Ahmed El Rufai rings bell uh, in the issue of courage, uh, in right. the issue uh, of being we'll, found. We'll have to end it here. Uh, in handling uh, complicated All right. Well, we'd have to end, you know, the uh, conversation here. Um, Onai Homo, uh, thank you very much. You started thank you. the uh, conversation for us this morning. Thank you so much for speaking with us and, of course, sharing your expert analysis. We look forward to speaking with you again. Uh, Samuel Arwan, uh, Commissioner for um, Internal Security and Home Affairs in Kaduna State, thank you also for making our time to uh, share with the public this morning. Truly appreciate it. Thank You're you. Welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Mr. Homo, thanks. Um, we'll take a short break. We're still here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. When we come back, we're talking petrol pricing and, of course, the recent events that uh, happened across Nigeria with regards to uh, petrol scarcity and uh, likely increment of uh, price of petrol. We'll be back.